Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Love Conference, specifically welcome to Money Moves, Ways to Create Financial Stability. My name is Sarah, and I'm really excited to see you all here at the Love Conference, hosted by the Office of Leadership Development, sponsored by Xfinity and Coca-Cola, and in partnership with the Wellness Resource Center and the Career Center. I am very pleased to introduce Danielle Davis. So I'm going to hand this over to Danielle to introduce herself and to kick us all off. Well, thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. And I'm like, I appreciate Temple University for bringing me here to this conference. Uh, and I'm excited to share all the things that I prepared for you all. And so, um, you know, I'd say strap up and, you know, I'm going to get ready for the ride because it's going to be fun. So with that being said, we're going to talk about money moves and ways to create financial freedom. So mm -hmm. Before we even kind of get into those pieces, you want to, uh-oh, look at the technology here. Oh, there we go. All right. That can work for us, David. So it's talking about what you need to know. What are we going to talk about for kind of the next like 40 minutes? It is one, you definitely during this pandemic, it's been hard. And so it's, you got to give yourself some grace. Uh, uh, Sarah and I were just talking about right before this started is that, you know, at the end of the day, yep might make mistakes, but we're going to pick ourselves up and we're going to dust ourselves off again and we're going to kind of roll with it. The other piece too is assess and figure out what works best for you. There is so much that is talking about what you do to become financially free and wealthy and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't work for you, it's not going to work. And so we have to figure out what works best for your style. When it talks about finance, it is not a one size fits all. And so you want to make sure what's best for you. Next is making plans that your future self will appreciate. So during this pandemic, it has been stressful and we're gonna talk a lot about what that looks like. But you wanna try to do small little steps of things that you say, you know what? I may not feel like doing this. I may be stressed, I may have some anxiety, but at the end of the day, will my future self be grateful for what I'm doing now? So we'll talk about that. And then last but not least, and this crazy times that we have is how do you continue to invest in you? So we'll talk a little bit about investing in the stock market, but at the end of the day, we have to invest in you and what it takes to make you tick. So that's what we're going to talk about. First and foremost, I want to let you know that you are not alone. You know, when it comes to this pandemic, it has been crazy. When it talks about emotionally, talk about physically, talk about spiritually, and most of all, the financial piece. I want to let you know that even in these stressful times, that approximately 50% of individuals are struggling during this pandemic. So for those of you out there who are like, oh, my budget went out the window, or I don't have a savings account, or I'm trying to find more income, I want to let you know that you're not alone. Everybody in this, I always say that we're all in the same storm, not in the same boat, but we're all in the same storm. So because uh, I know everybody's boat looks a little different, but one to let you know, you're definitely not alone. So to talk about not being alone, I want to give a few stats, right? So 14% of people who have wiped, 14% during this pandemic have wiped out their savings. So for those who are like, oh, I had three to six months, six months of uh, savings, um, I'm good to go. Well, three to six months has passed at this point. And so there is no, they don't have savings. There's a zero. And then another 11% of folks have borrowed. So using a credit card or asking parents or friends or family for expenses. So that leaves about 25 folks who really and truly have nothing and are depending on other folks to pay for things for them or uh, going to, you know, I'm like, get food for places that are free. And so again, you're not alone if you're struggling with some of these things. The other thing to on top of everything that's happening with this pandemic is there's another pandemic that is kind of silently happening. And that is student loan debt. We're going to talk about that briefly. But just to put it out there, I looked at Philadelphia, $35,000 is the average that the students have in um, student loan debt, 35,000. That's quite a bit, right? And if you're looking a little further, for those who are about to graduate, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, we'll talk about that, but you'll have approximately $398 every month that you're going to have to pay to pay back those loans because of interest. So we're going to talk about how do I do and thank my future self for the things I'm going to do now. So the first step, give yourself some grace. I'm going to use myself as an example. 
So I may or may not have a Starbucks issue, right? So I love Starbucks. I love what I do when I get that warm cup of coffee, especially when it has like the red cups. I'm excited for those to come out. But I have put myself on a budget where I only use like 20 to $30. Um, I say I'm going to do a month in Starbucks. These last couple of months, that's been a little hard because I want to give myself a treat. And so my spending for Starbucks has gone up some, but I have to give myself grace in knowing Danielle, it's going to be okay. If I go off, you know, kind of get off the bandwagon of being in budgets or investing or so on and so forth. During this pandemic, you have to give yourself grace in knowing that there's sometimes you want to have that extra whatever. I want to, shoes are on sale or, you know, I'm like these gym shoes are on sale, so on and so forth. So you got to give yourself a little bit of grace. And what that looks like, if you don't give yourself grace, being transparent is you deal with anxiety. So for those who are stressed out about money, and I'm like, even if you're not stressed out about money when it comes to this pandemic, is you're dealing with a lot of anxiety. It's the what ifs. So I'm thinking about what if I can't pay my bills? What if I can't pay for tuition? Um, I have something coming up for the club that I'm a part of. And so you're dealing with that anxiety piece if you're not giving yourself grace. The other thing too, unfortunately, is you deal with depression. So it's one of those things that I can't control what is happening. Um, and I'm not giving myself grace because I'm trying to push and push and push and do like I used to do before the pandemic. And it doesn't work like that. Your body, your mind, your soul, they all need a break. And so we wanna make sure that you're giving yourself grace no matter if you mess up or not. The other one too is you start to make some bad decisions when you're stressed out about money, right? You're trying to figure out how do I make money quick? Um, and sometimes it you know, may not be the right way or you're starting to make decisions about do I not pay a ticket, a parking ticket, because I need to have food, right, to eat? And so you're trying to make those better decisions, but if you're stressed out, you just can't, you can't do anything when it comes to um, making good decisions. The other one too, unfortunately, is you have some serious physical ailments. So for those of you who don't know, when you are stressed out, you get high blood pressure, you can have heart issues, um, it literally just stresses you out mentally where you can't focus, you can't concentrate. And so again, if you're stressed out about something, it's like, okay, breathe in and breathe out. And I'm going to give you some suggestions later on about how to do some of this stuff um, in a cheap way on a student budget, because that's what I'm all about is being on a budget. And then last but not least, this one we've actually seen a whole lot more of in society is your risk of substance abuse and addictions, they've increased. So doing some research during the pandemic, Alcohol sales have gone up about 25%, 25%. So for those who are struggling trying to figure out, I think I'm addicted to this or that, I'm like, I suggest definitely getting help and we'll talk more about what that looks like. Um, but again, it's one of those things that knowing you're not alone. And so don't get down on yourself. Don't beat yourself up about stuff you're making mistakes in. And just saying at the end of the day, I am going to be okay. I give myself grace. Uh, and as you're giving yourself grace, you wanna make sure you give others grace as well. Okay, how can you combat money stressors, right? I'm like, I'm stressed out about it. What can I do about it? The one thing to do is, is try not to look at your current situation. And I know that's hard, right? I like, but at the end of the day, you wanna look and focus on your future. You're looking at what can I do to thank myself later? And so one of those is investing. And we're gonna talk more about how easy it is to invest and you can invest even as little as $5 a month. So investments definitely are going to help you in the long term. The other one too, as we talked about before, the depression and the anxiety, seeking therapy. Um, a lot of the money stressors happen uh, because you're like, I don't have enough money for this. I don't have enough money for that. And then it seeps over into other aspects of your life. And so because you are a student, you all will be able to get therapy for free. And those who um, have insurance, you can use your co-pays, so on and so forth, but definitely seeking therapy is really important. The other one is creating healthy coping mechanisms. So instead of you drinking alcohol, for example, or doing something else, it's how do I pick up a new hobby? Um, how do I go for a bike ride? How do I um, pick up some, for me during this pandemic, I have become a plant mama, right? So I bought too many plants, I gotta put myself on a budget for plants, but you wanna create a healthy coping mechanism so that when you're stressed, you're like, what else can I do besides do things that I might be addicted to? The other one too is credit counseling. So if you're looking at that credit score and you're like, whoo, I have to work on my credit score because I want to be able to buy a house later on. I wanna be able to buy a car later on. 
you're like, how can I do those things? You can seek out credit counseling and a lot of them are fairly reasonable. So maybe like $50 a month, um, which I know for some college students can be a lot, but when you get to get that big girl or big boy job, then maybe you can do the credit counseling. And then last but not least, you can attend webinars like this, right? You can um, help yourself to understand how money works. How can I invest? How can I save? How can I know if another pandemic or something like this happens? How can I feel more prepared and more in control when it comes to my personal finances? The second step is assess and figure out what works best for you. So at the end of the day, what works best for everybody else may not work best for you. I use a prime example. So um, we'll talk more about budget stuff, but I was like, everybody's like, oh, I'm on a budget and I'm gonna use these cash envelopes and it's gonna work for me. And I realized quite quickly that cash envelopes did not work for me. And so I had to figure out I'm using an app works better and connecting that to my Chase account to be able to uh, track where my money comes from is what works best for me. And so you wanna look through this presentation and say, that doesn't work for me, Danielle, but this does. And that's okay too. So if you're assessing your finances, when we talk about what works best for you, you gotta assess it. You gotta figure out where I'm at. This is the hardest step for a lot of my clients and for a lot of students, because you're like, I really don't wanna know where I am. I just don't wanna know how bad it is. When I ask a lot of my students, I was like, hey, you know, let's talk about graduation. How much do you have in student loan debt? A lot of them are like, I don't know. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? How do you not know how much student loan debt you have? I think for a lot of students, it's just like, I don't wanna to have to worry about that right now. I have tests, I have quizzes, I have these things that are right now in my face, but I still want you to have that in the back of your mind so that you don't take out more student loans than you need, right? So first and foremost, assess how much you owe. So we're gonna take all of the accounts, and I said, yes, all the accounts, including the student loans, including the credit card debt, including maybe you bought a car and you owe a loan for that, um, somebody has a payday loan please don't do those if you can avoid it because the interest rate is crazy um, but calculate how much you owe so that way you know kind of what boat you're in what i'm finding is that a lot of folks think they're worse off than what they are so give yourself a little grace there second is assist um assess your income right so are there ways to make you have a consistent paycheck and I know that's a little difficult for students because sometimes your hours may change. You may work 19 hours here. You may work 15 hours there. Uh, but you want to see if there's ways you can make consistent income. Um, I use a perfect example of you say, hey, I'm only making $15 and uh, $14 an hour or $10 an hour or $7 an hour. How do I supplement that by maybe being a secret shopper? Because as a student, you can do that. Or how do I supplement that by being a virtual assistant for someone and you doing it on your own terms in your own time? So you wanna see how can I supplement my income so that way I can start paying off maybe some of the things that I owe. Second is check that credit score, right? So most students are like, ah, credit score, it's not that important, I'll worry about it later. Well, I'm here to tell you that having a negative credit score can definitely affect the rest of your life. And we're gonna talk about that some more, but it can affect you getting a job. So you wanna look at your credit score and see where am I at and how can I make steps, even if it's small steps like paying your bills on time, how can I make steps to make sure that my credit score increases over time? Last, uh, second to last is set realistic goals. So I have some of my students who are like Ms. D, I'm gonna pay off all of my student loans in the first year that I have. And I'm like, are you gonna stay at home with your parents? Are you not gonna have a car? Are you gonna walk to work? Like, you have to be realistic with what you're trying to set as goals. Maybe one of your goals is, hey, I'm gonna save $10 a month or $20 a month, right? That's a goal. One of your goals is maybe I'll try to pay the interest on a student loan um, that I owe. And maybe that's like $200 over a semester. So it's those types of things that you want to do is set realistic goals. Try not to, you know, want to take over the whole world um, in a semester or in a year, but be realistic. And then last but not least, budget, right? And I'm like, I hear this B word. Everyone's like, oh, budgets. They hear it. They kind of cringe like, I don't want to do it. But you can make budgeting fun. Maybe a nerd about it. I love finance. I love accounting. But how do you make budgeting interesting and how you make it work for you? So some of those examples are, 
Um, tracking your spending, we talked about that a little bit, but there's a couple budgets that you might do. So one is called bare bones. Bare bones is I have to pay a bill. My tuition is due by the end of October, for example. I know I need to get this money together, so I'm gonna do bare bones, meaning I am only going to buy my essentials. I'm only going to use what I need. I'm not gonna go out to eat. I'm not gonna go to the movies. I'm not gonna go, you know, I'm like do anything with my friends because I have to save money to pay off something in a certain amount of time. I don't suggest that. I uh, tell some of my clients, even some of the students, if you're gonna do that, maybe do it for max a month, two months, because it makes it miserable. It's not fun when I can't do anything fun, right? So try not to get yourself in those situations. The next one is cash only. We talk, I talked about that a little bit earlier on. So you have these nice little envelopes and I'm like, you can either decorate them or just have like a manila envelope. And the envelope essentially is what will have your money for that particular task. So for example, um, I have my going out budget. If my going out budget is $50 a month, I'm going to stick $50 in cash to that envelope. And when I go somewhere, I take that, cat, that envelope with me. However, when I run out of money in that envelope, guess what? That means I can't go out anymore. Or I'm going to have to borrow from my grocery budget, for example. And we don't want to do that, right? So it's a cash only method. That may work for you. Didn't necessarily work for me. But again, you got to do what works best for you. La uh, second to last is um, special events. So you have um, uh, spring break coming up, right? So spring break, you say, I want to go somewhere. Maybe it's my first spring break, my second, my last spring break. I want to do it big. So how do I save for a special event? If I want to go to Florida, if I want to go, you know, maybe international or something like that, I'm going to say, how much does it cost for me to do that? So maybe $500 and maybe $1,000. And then how much time do I have to save up that amount of money? So if I have um, $1,000, I have 10 months to save that $1,000. That means that's going to be $100 a month, right? That means that I have to adjust my budget to make sure I have $100 a month to save. So that's a special event. Another one is 50, 30, and 20. It's kind of what you guess it to be. I'm going to take my budget, whatever that is, and I'm going to say 50% of this goes towards my needs, 30% goes towards my wants, and 20% goes towards my savings. Now, this is where it gets a little hairy for some students, okay? So your wants and your needs, they get a little blurry, it gets a little gray. So you wanna make sure, do I really want this or do I really need this? Um, for example, if you wanna get your nails done, it might not be a um, need, it might be a want. If I wanna buy the latest Jordans, eh, it might not be a need, it may be a want. Uh, if I wanna go out with my friends, so on and so forth, you get the gist, right? So those are some different aspects of budgeting, but you wanna make sure at the end of the day during this type of COVID environment that you're in, that you're budgeting and saying, how, do I, how am I in control of at least my money? I'm not in control of what's happening in the world today, but I'm in control of the money or the things that I possess. And so for me, that budget is a zero based budget. So I look at, okay, how much money am I making? And then I'm going to spend every penny of that and allot that for different things to where at the end of the day, what I'm making and what I'm spending equals zero, right? So uh, I'm going to put in my budget, for example, my savings. I'm going to put it where I give it to um, gifting, so on and so forth. But I'm uh, literally allotting every penny down to the penny. And one way I like to do this is I use an app because me writing something down is just not my thing. Um, so you can use like, uh, there's a Dave Ramsey app or you can use Mint. Um, so those types of things are what you can do to do zero-based budgeting. All right, budget tips for college students. I remember back in the day when I was young, I was like, oh, I got this I wanna do, I got that I wanna do, but then I realized the way my bank account was set up, it didn't wanna do those same things I wanted to do, right? So I looked and kind of did some average numbers and the average monthly um, allowance that a student gets from working is about $691. Now, I know you're probably thinking that's what college students wear. So some it varies, but the average is, right, is $691. The first thing you wanna do is use your money wisely, but also use your student discounts. Guys, being a student, live it, love it. You always go somewhere and say, hey, do you have a student discount? Amazon has a student discount. Uh, Stash has a student discount. We're going to talk about that in investment app. Um, 
looking at Netflix, right? So ask anywhere and everywhere. Do you have a student discount? Some um, restaurants even have student discounts. So you're like, I'm on a budget. Let's see where I can get the best discount. Another one is live within your means and use your resources. So if you know that you have 691, you wanna make sure that I'm not spending 700, which means I have to use a credit card or borrow from somebody. I wanna make sure that I'm saving a little bit of it. If it's 691, can I save $60? Almost 10% of that. The other thing too is use your resources. So if I noticed that uh, Temple University has a uh, like money center, use that to figure out how can I invest, right? We're gonna touch a little bit on that today, but how do I get hands-on experience with investing, um, with saving, so on and so forth. So you always wanna use the resource that you have, especially if they're free. Another one is find additional sources of income. So I mentioned earlier, you know, do I become a secret shopper? Um, and we can talk about that a little bit later on if you guys have questions about that. Do I become a virtual assistant where I can do it on my own time? I like the secret shopper and the virtual assistant because it's not consistent. So if I have a, um, a final going on or if I have a midterm going on, I can say, I don't wanna do that this week, right? So those are some examples of where you can have additional income to supplement what you're trying to do in life. The third step, make plans your future self will thank you for. Like I said, it's tough times, guys. I get it. Anxiety is riding high. Depression is riding high. Um, I just emotionally, the Zoom fatigue, we talked about that. I'm like, Lord, between Zoom and uh, WebEx and all this, I get it. Everybody's exhausted. And so it's how do I take little steps to make future plans for myself. So when we get to 2021, because I think that's gonna be a lifesaver 2021, at least I'm hoping, um, or 2022, that we're like, okay, at least it wasn't all bad, right? So how do we do that? We start investing. And I know you're thinking investments, oh my gosh, that's stressful. How do I know what to do? What happens, what if, right? But you can always start small. So for example, you can afford, if you can afford to invest $25 a month, then do it. Does that mean that, oh, I maybe not be able to go out with my friends now because I might be a retired later or I can't get that thing that I want now because I might be able to buy upgrade of that later? Then why not do that? It's kind of that satisfaction that continues to build over time to get what you really want. So you can start small. And I know for some who are like, I don't have $25. I understand there was a point in time that I didn't have it either. You can invest as small as $5. And it won't cost you much of anything, literally $5. You say, all right, I'm not going to get that Big Mac today. I'm going to go ahead and get maybe a cheeseburger or something, right? You're saving money there. The other thing, too, is invest what you use. You're try probably trying to figure out, what the heck do I invest in? I don't know. How about you invest in what you use? Look down right now. What are you wearing? It's a prime example, right? So if I'm looking down now, I happen to like Nine West um, is one of my favorite pair of shoes that I have or a lot of shoes that I have. So I'm gonna go online, I'm gonna look and see is Nine West a publicly traded company? Meaning they're on the stock market. If they are, why not invest in Nine West? I purchase it, I buy it. If you got Nikes on, if you got you know Adidas, whatever have you. So looking at what I have on, what do I like to use? So for the ladies, what are your hair care products? Who owns them? For the guys, if you're into sports, who, um, who makes your clubs? Uh, who makes your basketball, so on and so forth? What is a parent company? So what owns that company? And invest in that. So you'll hear me use this phrase every now and again, is own what you consume and then consume what you own. I'll say that again. Own what you consume and then consume what you own. So I wanna buy Nike stock. So I'm gonna buy the Nike stock, then I'm gonna turn around and buy the Nike gym shoes because I'm owning what I consume and I consume what I own, right? Last but not least, when you're investing, you have something called passive income. I like to describe this as you're making money while you're sleeping. While you're laying your head down, snoring, drooling, with that, whatever that is, you are making money while you are sleeping. Why? Because you're getting what they call dividends so a company will say, thank you so much for investing in us every quarter. So every four months, they're going to invest in you. Excuse me, every three months, they're going to give you a thank you, which is called a dividend. That's um, residual income or passive income. You don't even have to do it. You're just making money while you're sleeping. 
So that's an example of how you can invest in your future. Another way to do that, and um, we have it here, is you can just start with $5. All the things that I've suggested here, I've actually invested myself. And so you have Stash, for example, which I use on a regular basis. I love Stash because of the fact that you can um, invest not only in a one stock if you wanted to, so like Amazon or Google, for example, but you can also invest in something called a mutual fund, which I think of like, a, remember those old school bouncy houses that used to have like the little balls in them, right? And we would throw them at each other when we were kids. Um, it's like that to where each little ball is a different stock and the bouncy house itself is considered to be a mutual fund, right? So you can use Stash or you can use Acorns. Those are, that's also easier too. Uh, and one that I have uh, not as familiar with, but I know works well for some of my clients is Robinhood. So that's another one. So you can just start investing with $5. These are my, some of my favorite quotes. If you can afford the product, you can afford the stock. Just do me a favor, right? I want you to go online right after this webinar and I want you to type in Nike stock cost. You're going to be quite surprised because the average cost and now the uh, market flows up and down. One stock is going to be one pair of Jordans, right? So I'm like, if you can afford to buy the product, why not invest in the stock? I'm just saying. I love this one. Owning AirPods is rich. People are like, uh, he got the new AirPods. He has AirPods 4, 5, and 6, you know, the iPhone, the watches, so on and so forth, all the fanciness. That's rich. However, owning the stock, now that's about wealth, right? Somebody wants to show off something, you're like, those are cute. Those will be out of style in a couple months because we know Apple likes to pop out products. But that wealth, that Apple stock has literally tripled and quadrupled in the last like 10 years. It's ridiculous. So you want to be rich or do you want to be wealthy? Instead of keeping up with the Joneses, try keeping up with the Dow Jones. I'm just saying, people like, I'm trying to keep up with the Joneses, but you all don't know, the Joneses are broke too. They're broke. They don't have the money. They're just pretending. So stop trying to keep up with them and keep up with the Dow Jones, which is the stock market. All right. If you're trying to thank your future self, one thing that you all can control right now is your student loan debt. Student loan nightmares. People lose sleep over this. It's crazy. Um, so I mentioned this before, is that Pennsylvania has one of the highest average student loan debts at $35,000 per student. That is crazy, $35,000. If you don't need it, then don't use it. A lot of my students are like, oh, I wanted to buy a car, so I took out a student loan debt. Um, oh, I got tired of being broke. That was my story one time. So I decided I wanted to take out a student loan. I have to pay that back, and it's ridiculous amounts of money, right? And so the effect of student loan debt you're not thinking about it now, but it's going to affect you for years and years to come. How? One, if your student loan payment to pay it back is really high, guess what? You're gonna be staying at your parents' house. You're gonna be staying at whoever your guardian's house is. And you may love them, but I'm trying to tell you, when you're in your 20s and you're trying to be grown, they're talking about they have rules. That's not fun. Nobody wants to do that. When you are um, concerned about it, you have really high student loan debt, you have something called bad credit. If you have bad credit, I don't know if you guys know this. One, no cell phone. You can't get a cell phone in your name. Two, house. If you're trying to buy a house, they're going to charge you either insane interest, which will literally increase your payment by thousands upon thousands of dollars over the life of your loan. Or three, uh, the third one is car. If I'm trying to buy a car, they might either tell you, nope, you can't buy the car or the average interest rate right now is like eh, two, 3%. Yours would be like 25% because your credit score is so low and your bad credit. So you wanna make sure that you are trying to keep that student loan debt as low as possible. Also, for those who are about to graduate, please, 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 I can't say this again, start paying off your student loans within those six months. I've had some of my students who are upset because they wanted to student default and their credit score dropped 125 points. That's a lot, that's a whole lot. When the average credit score, or the highest credit score you can get is 850, 125 points is the difference between you riding around in some hoopty or something like that, right? Which is fine because again, you don't have a car note 
or trying to ride around in a Toyota or something, you know, a Celica, I mean, a, a Camry or something like that. So thinking about those things. And one that I think that is really difficult uh, that folks don't know about, you have issues getting a job. So I don't know if you know this, but people do background checks on you when you get a job. They always have you fill out this HR form. If they realize that your credit score is really, really low, either one, it says two things about you. One, it says is you're not responsible. Um, and so they're concerned about hiring you. Two, you are susceptible to the elements, if you will. So for example, if you try to get into the police academy, they will not let you in if you owe a certain amount of debt. Why? Because they're afraid that criminals can talk you into stuff. You're about to arrest somebody and they're like, hey, if you give me $50,000, you know, I won't, you won't have to, I'll give you $50,000, you won't have to arrest me. If you are a whole lot of debt, you're like, eh, I kind of could pay that up, right? So you have to be thinking about how that will affect you getting a job later on. So I'll be said, please, please, please only take out what you need. All right, the fourth step, continue to invest in you. So during this time, yeah, you can invest in the stock market. Yes, you can do, you know, like work at school and investing in your education. But all said, if you're not investing in you and refilling your bucket, nothing else matters. I can't invest in the stock market if I can't concentrate. I can't um, do my classwork if I'm feeling anxious about stuff. So I want to make sure that you are also taking time during this pandemic to invest in you. What does that look like? So I'm all about being frugal. I'm all about how do we do things fun, but yet, you know, on the frugal side, I won't call myself cheap because I'm like, well, but frugal. One, take a yoga class at your university or a class you like, I've always wanted to do that, but you just haven't done it. We have a rock climbing at my institution. Um, we have, they have like a, a bike trail. Um, they have Frisbee golf. What are something you're like, I'm going to try something different because you might like it. You never know. The other one too is go for a scenic walk. So your campus, and I've done research, is beautiful. Why not walk around, um, see what's out there? Maybe you take a different path than you haven't taken before on the quad, right? Just do something different to get out and see green. The other one too, and I would suggest just for those out there, please put yourself on a budget, pick a plant. I picked a plant like three months ago and plant turned into plants, right? But taking care of something other than yourself feeding something and watching it grow, it gives you satisfaction. So even for those who are like, oh, I'll do plants, you can do a cactus or you can do um, the bamboo, right? Those are kind of hard to kill, even though I've killed one. But anyway, um, watch funny YouTube videos, right? I was like, you're not feeling it. You're like, I'm feeling sad today. I don't want to deal with my money. Ugh, I just don't want to do it. Watch funny videos. I love where you know, I'm like, you see pets, they're falling over somewhere, or somebody's tripping, or, you know, a dad saving a kid from a bike coming their way just in the nick of time. Those are funny, right? And so you want to make sure you're keeping your mind laughing and just relaxed. Another one is enjoying some herbal tea. So I love teas. I'm a tea person, and I'm also a coffee person, as you can tell by Starbucks. But how do you keep something warm, right? And making sure at the end of the day, especially as it's getting cold, it just warms up your body, which can warm up your mind, which can kind of get you going. Last but not least, I'm surprised you haven't heard them. I have two dogs and they bark, but those are my babies. And so there's actually statistics that say if you're playing with your pet, it lowers your cortisol, which means that it kind of increases your feeling of like love or increases your feeling of, or lowers your anxiety. So if you don't have a pet, just borrow somebody else's pet or, you know, randomly be in the park somewhere and say, can I play with your dog a little bit? How to stay in the financial no, right? So if you're talking about investing in yourself, you're like, I don't know where to start first. And I know this is just kind of dibbling and dabbling into what it comes to be in finances, but it is podcasts. So I know some of you are like, oh, what podcasts to do? And so one of a couple of them that I like to listen to is the side hustle show. So I was talking about that earlier about how do you make some money on the side? So one of them is a side hustle show, gives you literally like hundreds of ways to get and to find extra money. Because as a college student, you can always use some, right? The other one is Dave Ramsey. So you probably have heard that before from your parents or even some of your friends, but Dave Ramsey has a pretty good pod podcast. I will say he's a little straightforward, straight to the point, no holes barred. So, you know, you got to be ready for like the abruptness and the abruptness of him. 
last but not a second to last is not least is the paychecks and balances. So it talks about literally budget pieces. It talks about how do I earn more income in other places as well. And then her money. Her money is just interesting ways to invest, what to invest in, uh, finances, wills, that type of thing. So looking at podcasts. Another one that I noticed that I wish I had in school and I didn't was you all have a student loan and money management center. Take advantage of it. They'll teach you how to invest at an early age. Fun fact about me, I actually bought my first stock at 19. Um, and it was because I had student loan, or not student loan, I had student money left over extra. And somebody was like, why don't you just invest your refund check? I invested my refund check, got dividends, and literally is still paying off, right? So if you're taking some of that, say I'm gonna take some of those things and invest it, which you have left over. But using that center can be like a difference between what house you buy 10 or 15 years from now. The other one is books. So yes, you're like, I, if I read another book besides what I have, right? I was like, I'm gonna just ugh, go crazy. But there's one called Clever Girl Finance. It's an easy read. Um, even if you wanna break it up into small little chapters, she's very hands-on with stuff. She explains things really easy. Um, you know, so just something you wanna pick up and learn more about. The other one is A Year of Less. I thoroughly enjoyed that book because it was like, do you need it all? Right before we got on, I got on, I was talking to Sarah about the amount of clothes that I have. But let's be honest, I wear maybe 20 or 30% of those clothes. So do I need to carry them from move to move, from house to house or apartment? No, I can save some money by not having to move and pack that stuff. So get rid of it the year of yet less. And then last but not least is free webinars. So I know you have this here. I know you have your money management center, but there's also places like moneymanagement.org and thegreenpath.com. So those are some of the things that I suggest definitely to thank yourself um, and kind of thank your future self, but then also investing in you and keeping you up to abreast as to what's going on, keeping you safe mentally, physically, and emotionally. So to recap, I want you to remember, give yourself some grace. You're gonna mess up, you are, but I will say this, you're young enough at this point that even if you mess up, you'll be able to come back from it. I want you to learn it now and not at 40 and 50 and 60 to where it affect the next generation. The other one is assess and figure out what works best for you. The things that I talked about, some of those will work for you and some won't and that's okay. You can't try to put a square peg in a circle hole. You've heard that before, your parents probably said that, right? And so what works best for you doesn't work best for everybody else. Another one is make plans that your future self will appreciate. Everybody knows this pandemic has taken a toll on all of us. I know I am tired. I want to go to the movies. I want to go ice skating. I want to go skating. I just want, I just want to do something, right? I want to go bowling. But at the end of the day, if I can't do those things and I'm saving some money, what can I do to say maybe in 2021, I'm like, it all wasn't in vain. 2020 wasn't all horrible. And then last but not least, continue to invest in you. It's rough. It is. 2020 has had its time. But at the end of the day, I want you to invest in who you are trying to be. Take time, give yourself grace, assess and figure out what works best for you and make a plan. And that's my Facebook. So if you're trying to get in contact with me, you have questions. I am all about the interactions. I love talking about financial freedom. I can talk about it forever, but I won't bore you. Um, but here's my Twitter, my Facebook and my Instagram. And then if you need it, you can just contact me there and I can give you my email address and we can work it out. Thank you, Temple University. Okay, hi, Danielle. Uh, so we're gonna kick off a little bit of Q&A. We already have one question submitted for you. So this is from Issa. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. What's the worst element for students in the student's nightmare? I'm assuming um, he put that question in when you were talking about the bad effects of student loan debt. So in reference to that. Yep. So if you're talking about the worst element, I would definitely say how it affects you in the future. Um, and so it's one of those things that, you know, if people don't know this, student loan debt actually affects your um, credit score more than almost anything else. 
So trying to default on your student loan debt is gonna be hard right now. Uh, they have given us an opportunity to do different repayment plans. And so I think the worst thing that can honestly happen is that you just don't do anything about it and hope it goes away. It is not gonna go away. And when I tell you I have some clients who thought it was gonna go away and then they were gonna get that refund check, they were like, yay, I'm excited. I'm getting a refund from my taxes. And Uncle Sam was like, nope, you can't have it. So um, definitely the, the worst detriment is just not to um, pay it or do anything with it. Well, thank you. I actually have um, a question too. So I think because we're in the age of social media, that there's this standard we feel we need to meet, whether that's keeping up with certain products or certain beauty standards, um, all of that. So what do you suggest to do so that you don't feel as pressured to spend this money? How do you prevent yourself from going into like mental health problems so that you don't want to spend the money? Yep, that is a great question. And I can speak from experience. So probably halfway through the pandemic, it was like so social media, I was almost addicted to it because there was nothing else to do. So I was watching stuff. I'm looking at workout videos. I'm looking at folks taking pictures, you know, with their new shoes and clothes. And I was like, I'm missing out, right? I want to have that because that is what happiness looks like. But I realized quite quickly that wasn't healthy for me. So one thing that the first thing that I did was I actually started unfollowing folks. So I did like a purge and it's like, okay, Danielle, yes, you can look at this woman who is a workout guru, right? It's like, and she sells all the products to help you work out and all the products uh, for, you know, cute clothes and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, is that what I need right now? So I started to unfollow a lot of folks and only follow, started following folks that were encouraging, that were inspirational, that were real. Um, there's a lot of social media out there and you hear this say all the time is, you know, don't be jealous of someone's snapshot of their life. Um, and so for me, it was, how do I just stop following them? Another one is I um, unsubscribed from a lot of emails. And that was hard because I was like, ah, oh, I want to know about the sale. But if you know about the sale, that means you're going to spend money. But if you don't know about the sale, you can't spend money. So for me, I started unfollowing some of my favorite, you know, shopping places. And then when I need something, I then go to the website or I'll wait for the sale by visiting the website. So I think those are some of the ways that I was able to do that. Um, another one is trying to pick up hobbies that make me happy. So to take the place of social media, it was, what is something I want to do? Um, weird about me, even though I'm kind of young, I love to crochet. <laughs> I love to do puzzles. Um, I like to, you know, ride my bike, so on and so forth. And so it's how do you pick up another hobby that will kind of fill in that space that the social media or me buying stuff, that feeling that I get, I'll get that from doing other things. Okay, well, no, I've probably been through the same thing. I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, I was watching a lot of YouTubers and one of them literally came on and was like, oh, no, you don't have to, uh, do not purchase everything I recommend. It's not good for you. I'm just showing this, that if you do want to splurge for yourself, if you do want to buy that Christmas present or whatever, you can do that, but do not feel obligated at all to buy this product because you think you're supporting me. I will be fine. And I think that's something that a lot of people forget going on social media is that they will be fine with or without your investment into them. You, Sarah, you hit it right on the head. It's all about, you know, you look at social media and folks don't think about it. It is about the emotional tie. It's about the emotional connection of saying, I need this. And so it's how do I kind of disengage and not look at that and say, do you really need that? Do you, you know, you may want it, but do you really need it? Um, and so I think it's like you said, is I like the fact that you mentioned, uh, I, I reward myself at least every now and again. So you said, when I go to the store, I reward myself. And I think that is a good way of consistently kind of feeling good and knowing that I'm doing something for me versus trying to hold back. And then all of a sudden you're like, I want to buy that expensive, whatever it is, because I feel like I deserve it. We always say that. I feel like I deserve it. And so we end up buying it and it's not in our budget. So you do small things and it's well worth it versus just spending on big things. We're getting a lot of questions actually into the Q&A right now. So. Okay. 
someone asked, can you remind me what you said about the special events when you were talking about budgeting? What is the difference between putting cash or a percent mm -hmm. away? Yep. So um, when you talk about as far as, uh, hold on, let me go back to it for you guys so you guys can see. And this is being recorded too, so you guys can have an opportunity to go back to, did I do it right? There we go. Okay. So we're talking about special events, for example. So you want to do something that's kind of like a one-off. So you want to go on vacation. Uh, you want to celebrate grandma's 80th birthday somewhere, right? Those types of things you want to save for a special event. So if I know that for example, my grandfather is turning 90. Um, thank goodness. You know, I'm like, he, he wants to go to Branson, Missouri, right? That's what he wants to do at 90. And so I'm realizing in order for me to do that, I got to take off time. I'm going to have to fly home um, to do that. And then it's going to cost for hotels. So that's probably going to cost me about $1,500 because I also want to get him a gift. So if I know his birthday is next year, August, I got about 11 months, 10 months to do that. That means if it's $1,500, that means I have to uh, save $150 a month for that special event. So that's what I mean by that. And then the other one is, if it works for you, is the needs, wants, and savings. So 50% of your income. So you're going to look at your income, what you get for the month on average, because we know sometimes that changes. And 50% of that is going to go towards your needs. So that's rent. That is a car note, maybe insurance, a cell phone. Those are needs. You got to get to those things, you know, in order to survive. And then 30% on your wants. Uh, I want to go out with my friends. I want to go to the movies. I want the Netflix subscription. I know gas, that one is definitely a want and not a need. Um, but, and then the last but not least is 20% in savings. So for me, I do about 10% to 15% in savings. And then I'm a tithing girl. Uh, and I also like to give, uh, that's just my nature. And so I do, uh, I split that kind of in half and I do like savings and, and tithing. Awesome. Thank you. So Isa asked another question. What did you do after the investment into stocks? Yeah, I like it. I like it. So after I invested in the one stock, um, I kind of got excited, right? So one thing I will say is um, I am not a person that watches my stock every day. Um, I watch it probably like once every two weeks to kind of see where things are going. But after I looked at the stock and I saw that it was making money and I was getting dividends from it at like age 20, I started investing in more and more stock um, to the point where, you know, I'm like, I'm at a, I have the ability. I just told, I was mentioning this before, I just bought a house. So I was able to sell some of the stock that I bought in college to pay for my down payment of my house, right? So for me, it was looking at and seeing what am I investing in? because you wanna make sure you diversify. So what I mean by diversify is, is that you're going to invest in a certain type of industry. So I'm gonna invest, if I'm gonna invest in the mobile industry, so I'm gonna buy from Toyota, I'm gonna to buy from GE, so on and so forth. I wanna put all my eggs in one basket, so I'm gonna buy from there. Then maybe I'll buy from the beauty. So maybe I'll invest in Ulta, I'll invest in uh, Sephora, so on and so forth. So you wanna make sure you diversify, and that's what I started to do. And so in, during this pandemic, surprisingly, the stock market has been doing really well. And so one of the things that I would suggest is, is again, I mentioned, what do you use? What do you buy? And invest in that. But then what do you know? So one is I love Google. Um, the parent company of Google is called Alphabet. Go figure. Uh, invested in Alphabet. Alphabet shot through the roof over the pandemic. Another one is Amazon. Amazon has gone crazy since the pandemic. And so I'm making a lot of money there. So it is just saying, how do I diversify? And again, if you don't have the money, $5, especially if you're using um, Stash. Stash will allow you to invest partial stock in things. So don't feel like I have to buy the whole stock. I can invest partial and I will get partial of that refund. Awesome. And then this is a really good question. How do you address the racial disparities in creating equity? I love that question. Love that question. Honestly, it is, and it's funny when you talk about what's going on in this pandemic, um, and remember I mentioned about 50% of folks are really struggling right now, um, but if you're looking at racial disparities and even socioeconomic disparities, that number shoots up to about 75%. 
So for me, it is all about how do I teach folks, uh, whether it be friends, whether it be family, folks who follow my social media pages, it's all about education. So I'm recognizing when it comes to that racial disparity, unfortunately, minorities, their parents didn't teach them about investments. Their parents didn't teach them about savings. As a matter of fact, unfortunately, we didn't even talk about budgets because I didn't know grandpa and grandpa had money where it was. You know, they would have it sometimes stored in the mattress somewhere. So it wasn't really talked about. But I think over the last generation and a half, I am where I am, honestly, is because of my mom. My mom talked to me about budgeting. And so for me, I want to make sure that anybody I come in contact with, I teach them about budgeting. Um, I try to encourage that it is not this thing that you can't, it's not insurmountable, that you can't do anything about it. it, is truly getting out there and then reaching out to some folks who you see on either social media um, or asking, like I said, your money management center of saying, how do I do this and where do I go? Because I agree with you, what you learn now is not just learning it for you, but you're learning it for the next generation, whether it be your kids, your grandkids, or even your aunts and uncles and your cousins. Awesome. Okay, we have one more question in the chat. And it's how can I get my student loan monthly payment lowered? You said, how can I get my student loan monthly payment? payment lowered? Lowered, oh, that's a good question. Okay, so um, what you can do is there's a couple ways to repay your loans. Um, and what you'll do is you're gonna go online um, and there you'll be able to click whether it be income-based repayment. So the one that is the way that you'll probably be able to pay the lowest amount is using your income-based repayment plan. And essentially what they're going to say is, what are you making per month? Um, and realizing that that might be like 50% of your income is your student loan. And so what you'll do is you will say to them, I only make X amount of money. And they're going to take a percentage of that and lower it considerably. So um, when I first started in higher education, I wasn't making anything really. And I had to call them and say, hey, I'm only making X amount of money. How do I get my loan lowered? And so they were able to do what they call income-based repayment. Um, there's another one that I don't suggest, honestly, and essentially that is like a balloon or growing payments. So what they'll do is they'll say, hey, you'll pay $100, uh, for example, you'll pay $100 for the first two years. After two years, and so you're three through five, you're gonna pay $300 a month. Uh, five through you know six, you're gonna pay 500. And then by the time it's, it's gotten to the last year, you're paying like $1,000. One that kind of uh, backloads the interest because it charges you interest every time, every day that you're, it's kind of sitting there. And so I would say the best bet is definitely income-based repayment. I know some of my clients and even my students, because of the amount of money that they make, their income-based repayment is zero because they don't make enough money, especially during the pandemic. So that would be a, definitely a way to get your income-based your uh, student loan monthly payment reduced. Awesome. Well, thank you, Danielle, for speaking today at the 2020 Love Conference. Um, if anyone else has any questions, please make sure to connect with Danielle on social media. I'm sure she would love to connect and answer any questions you have for her. But thank you all for attending tonight's session.